Hi booktube, I apologize my printer just had a conniption and I am here to do a book haul. You may see the new face running around in the background, that would be Kachansky. Um, and she might come say hi, but uh, right now she's exploring this room because she's just recently been allowed in this room and it might be humorous. So I was in Canada for a little bit and um, the stack happened, so we're going to get through the stack and yeah. This is my November haul. It better not get bigger. That's all I'm saying. Let's start with the biggins. Uh, everybody and their sister went out and bought this on the 7th, I believe. It's The Revolution of Marina M by Janet Fitch. And I am a... Hey. Hey. What you doing? Hey. So this is part one, actually there's going to be a second part coming out, and it is the story of Marina Makarova. I don't know much more than that. I am a white Oleander disciple, so I had to get this. I did not enjoy Painted Black that much. So I'm just going to pretend Painted Black doesn't exist, and I'm hoping for a big win on this one. I don't think that's too crazy at all. Um, You'll notice that in Canada I went specifically for things that I either cannot get here in the United States or that are harder to get in the United States, uh, and so they're not necessarily easily available, And uh, but I wanted to focus on that because that's who I am. My brother is lending me this, so technically it's not mine, but, uh, but I'm hauling it because I might actually want to buy my own copy. And it's called Have Not Been the Same, The Can Rock Renaissance 1985-1995. Uh, by Michael Barclay, Ian A.D. Jack, Jason Schneider, Schne Schneider, yeah, with a foreword by Gordon Downey, a.k.a. Gord Downey, who passed away recently, lead singer of the Tragically Hip, but if you actually look at the cover, it lists all of the dang bands from that time period, and I can name songs from almost all of them, I have listened to almost all of them, and I am really excited to read about the can rock renaissance because it was such I, I grew up in this generation um the 90s the 90s in canadian rock when much music was still good you know treble charger the tragically hip crash vegas junk house neil young sarah harmer hayden sarah mclaughlin cub voivod skinny puppy sloan everybody knows sloan men without hats Blue Rodeo, Bare Naked Ladies, 5440, The Pale, the Spirit of the West. Like, I could read all of these guys, which I kind of am, but I know most of the songs from them, and I'm really interested to see how that plays into everything. Um, there's just a bunch of uh, blurbs on the back, so it doesn't really tell you what it's all about. I assume it's just very in-depth about the music scene. My brother said he read this quite quickly despite its size and he basically only reads Lord of the Rings and uh, War History so this is a definitely an interesting recommend from there. Now I went to two bookstores in Saskatoon. One was an Indigo which is a big chain, Chapters Indigo. It, it's the Barnes and Noble of Canada. And the other one was McNally Robinson, which is an independent store that has stores in Manitoba and Saskatchewan for sure. I'm not sure if it actually got to Toronto too. I used to shop at the Winnipeg one a lot. So most of these are nonfiction, some are not. Okay. We're starting with Sharon Butella's The Girl in Saskatoon, a me meditation on friendship, memory, and murder. Uh, Sharon Butella is a very well-known Canadian writer. She wrote uh, The Perfection of the Morning, which I had to read for university, which is a great story about how um, farming was affected by uh, Monsanto pesticide usage, etc. She is from... Where is she from? Does it tell me? She's, she's won the or Order of Canada. She currently lives in Calgary, Alberta. She used to live in the corner, in the southwest corner of 
Saskatchewan and farmed there with her husband, which is why she was able to write all of that in The Perfection of Mourning. This is about her friendship with a girl who was um, murdered on the Saskatchewan River and, of course, was an Aboriginal woman and how we pretty much didn't give a crap about it. It was a Globe 100 Best Book of the Year and it's put out by Harper Perennial. Uh, she was a high school classmate of Alex Wucheruk, who was found brutally murdered on the banks of the Saskatchewan River in 1961. Uh, so, true crime. It's, it's, it's in my wheelhouse. I like Sharon Butala. I've read her writing. I really enjoy her writing, so I'm looking forward to working on that. Um, should come as no surprise, I picked up some Richard Wagamese. There's a couple Wagamese's in here uh, because of the fact that I really liked Indian Horse. This one for Joshua is an Ojibwe father. Okay, that word right there. Sorry. That word right there is Ojibwe or Ojibwa, depending on how, if it's more Eastern. So, and uh, so I picked this one up. It's, it's not, it's, it's ruminating for his son. It's not necessarily uh, um, fiction or nonfiction. Uh, he goes into um, some native teachings, which should be interesting. It uh, says it does it based on the medicine wheel and I'm, I'm really excited to see how, how, what he has to say and what he has to impart on the next generation. So for Joshua, uh, this one is put out by Athabasca Press, Athabasca University Press, which is Athabasca. Alberta, yeah. Oh yeah, this is the Siksika First Nation. Siksika being right by Calgary, Alberta. This is My Decade at Old Sun, My Lifetime of Hell by Arthur Bearchief. It's an autobiography about a boy going through residential school, the Old Sun Residential School in Gleichen on the Siksika First Nation. Um, and this is his recollections based on his experiences there so it's going to be horrifying and sad and uh, I look forward to reading it which seems weird I shouldn't look forward to reading someone's like hell but I think that we need to um, we speaking as a Canadian or speaking as a North American citizen we need to understand what was done and I think reading testimonials and biographies of the time so that we can further understand the the scope of residential school is important. Up next is a University of Virginia Press book. I got a couple of University of Virginia Press books. R University of Virginia Press, of course, famously put out Clearing the Plains by uh, James Daschuk. This is the new edition of Children of the Broken Treaty by Charlie Angus. Uh, Canada's Lost Promise in One Girl's Dream. This uh, looks at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the deaths of some children in Thunder Bay, Ontario, and how that was horrifying and what led up to it. This is a very academic look at it, um, which means that, you know, unlike most like this is all all notes. This back end here is all all notes and um, meow. Uh, bibliographies, everything, and so this looks at uh, Saint Anne's, Saint uh, the James Bay problem, Attawatta Piscat, which was famous, which was made famous um, because of the tragically hip and the 2011 housing crisis and they've added a section in this reviewed renewed edition of 2012 to 2017 honey no we do not jump up down no 
We do's not. We do's not. Kachansky's only been here for three days. Three days? Has it been three days? Or is it four? One sec. Come here, my girl. Come here. I don't want you up there. I don't want you up there. No. Come here. You go here. You go here. Okay? Okay. She's a sweetheart, and I love her. And um, she's very different from the other ones that, that I had. She's eight years old, and I got her from the Humane Society. And she is a purring little love bug right now. So let us continue onward, shall we? This next one is a national bestseller. It's very tiny. It's a new edition of, and it's been, okay, go down, go down, go down. Thank you. It's a new edition of The Education of Augie Morasti, a residential school memoir by Joseph August Morasti with David Carpenter. It's also put out by the University of Regina Press. Uh, my friend Dylan told me I should read this. It's not very big. It's And it's got a study guide in it, so you could actually teach it in school. It's 80 pages long. I've been told it is very intense. Um, and Joseph August Morasti attended St. Teresa Residential School in Sturgis Landing, Saskatchewan. From 1935 to 1944, he lives in Prince Albert. I, I lived for a year in Prince Albert. Um, I, I know where Sturgeon Landing is. That's way the heck up north. And then I picked up Seven Fallen Feathers, Racism, Death, and Hard Truths in a Northern City by Tanya Tala, Talaga. It's got a blurb by Catherine Vermet, who wrote The Break, and I'm st I still have that on my TBR. This is uh, looking from 2000 to 2011 at, again, the Thunder Bay incident where um, seven Indigenous high school students died. And this is put up by Nancy Books. It's going to be a hard read. It also um, has a lot of notations and bibliography and research that's been done. It's sad. It's really friggin' sad. But again, if if we don't read about it and we don't discuss it and we don't disseminate the knowledge, how can we grow? We can't. We can't grow as a people if we don't look at it. Uh, then I picked up The Reason You Walk by Wab Canoe. It was a Globe and Mail Best Book, the RBC Taylor Press finalist, uh, national bestseller. Uh, he is... He was on the CBC. I think he might still be on the CBC, and he's also a musician. He's he's well known in Canada. People know who Wab Canoe is, and so I really want to read his memoir. I I think it could be very interesting. Um, but this is his reconciliation with his father, and First Nations biographies. It's where I'm at, yo. My Book of the Month Club came. It is The Future Home of the Living God by Louise Erdrich, and I have a lot of Louise Erdrich I need to read. This one is apparently sci-fi. And I lived in Minneapolis. I lived in Bloomington, which is in, like, a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so it takes place there. That's where Erdrich actually has a bookstore, uh, Birch Park Books. I went there with my friend Lily. We bought books. Go figure. And so I'm, I'm interested in reading that, but we're in nonfiction November, so the only thing I'm not reading that's not nonfiction is uh, War and Peace. <laughs> Odd choice, I know. Oh, and I didn't bring the book I am currently reading, which is A House in the Sky, which I also got. And there are a couple books I got that I, yeah. So the next up is The Knowledge Seeker, Embracing Indigenous Spirituality by Blair Stonechild, with a foreword by Noel Starblanket. It is a University of Regina Press book. I, um, I know Blair Stonechild, not as well as my family knows him. My mother used to work with him. She worked at the Saskatchewan Indian Federated College, which later went on to become the First Nations University of Canada. My brother currently works there, um, which is why I know all about these books. 
he's written uh, loyalty to loyal till death or is it loyal? yeah loyal till death which was a good one um, and a biopic of Buffy St. Marie who is amazing and he also wrote the new Buffalo which has to do with the education this one I wanted to read because it's all about embracing indigenous spirituality and I'm interested in that and perhaps embracing my spirituality a bit more and coming to understand them the interesting thing is I was reading the acknowledgments and he like everyone he acknowledges I know a lot like they were they were very influential for me growing up like Willie Pegan, James Iron Eagle, Dr. Ahab and Betty Spence they were the elders at the university and I grew up like they were like grandparents to me so um, Isidore Pelche I know him as well so it's interesting to hear their te their teachings and getting to know that so looking forward to that anything put out by the University of Regina Press you can get through the University of Regina um, it is not as easily accessible I'm pretty sure you can get them used on Amazon or you can always go to amazon.ca and this one I know you can buy in the US but I wanted the paper copy I'm not sure it's out in, in sock cover here in the U.S. yet. So the 2015 selection of Canada reads The Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Account of Native People in North America by Thomas King, which is kind of a humorous take on um, basically contact, uh, pre-contact to contact. And um, I'm not sure how it'll go. I My experience with Thomas King is green grass running water, which, again, I think... I either took it in the last years of high school or in the first years of university. It wasn't really, um, I don't think it was the right headspace for me. This is, this is being touted as history, so I guess it's nonfiction. I picked up Richard Wagamese's One Story, One Song, which is actually a short story collection. Um, Uh, I'll read the blurb. His focus is on stories, how they shape us, how they empower us, how they change our lives, ancient and contemporary, cultural and spiritual, funny and sad. This is put out by Douglas and McIntyre. I don't usually do short stories, but I really like this stuff, and I figured, hey, why not? This one is broken down, again, into the four, four cardinal things. <sighs> Running out of places to put books in my life, period. Here, you guys go up there. Will you stay up there? You'll stay up there, okay. If there's an avalanche, you know why. Then I picked up Medicine Walk because it was cheaper in Canada, and again, I could get it in paper bag. It's got a blurb from Thomas King on the front, and I don't really care about that. And I got it because I loved Indian Horse. I have absolutely no idea what it's about. Oh, the BC interior, I'm right below that. Okay, well, Richard Wagamese fastly becoming one of my favorite authors even though he's dead which really sucks let me say I picked up this gorgeous edition of The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers I've heard good things about it it was cheap and I just it's cute like it's so adorable and if I can get British editions in Canada I will I this one I had in my Amazon wish list for the longest time and then they stopped printing it in the US which peeved me right off so I did pick it up in Canada and it's Joan Crate's Black Apple it is a fictional novel about a girl who goes to residential school um, and yeah I'm it's put out by Simon and Schuster it's set during and after the Second World War and an apple, of course, is a term, a, a derisive term that people use for Aboriginal people who are red on the outside and white on the inside, similar to an Oreo. I have been called an apple many times. <laughs> I picked up a uh, Cecilia song by Lee Maracle because I couldn't find Raven song, and uh, it's supposed to be good, but that was my uh, my rationale there and uh, everything's sliding everything's like there's avalanches everywhere so CBC books 
So lots of places are, are blurbing it. I don't really care about the blurbs. I just want to read it and I want to read some Lee Markle and see if I like her. From what I understand, she's from the British Columbia area, originally published in Toronto. So maybe, uh, maybe I'm on glue. No, she was born in Vancouver and grew up on the North Shore. So yeah, looking forward to it. No idea what it's about, but that's how I roll. I'm going to grab the last two and hope that this doesn't slide any further. Then I got Leanne Betasamoska. Beta Betasamoskake. That is definitely an Aboriginal name. Simpson. This accident of being lost, which is newer. It's put up by Astoria, which is an Anansi uh, imprint. It's a collection of short stories and flash fiction and poetry. There was one in here I thought was hysterical. Which one was it? A few good reasons to wear a long skirt. That one made me laugh. That's what I was thinking of. Um, she is a Michi Segig Nishnabig writer, scholar, musician. She has a PhD from the University of Manitoba. Uh, her previous book, Islands of Decolonial Love, which I actually want to read. And so I think this will be good to read. I, again, not usually my forte and I'm not a big thing on poetry, but uh, Naomi Klein blurbed the front and I love Naomi Klein. Playful, pissed off and ferociously funny, Leanne. Betta Samoske Simpson writes irresistible love stories in the jaws of genocide. A genius shapeshifter, a defiant genre detonator. There's quite simply no one like her. So there's that. I want to get the I, uh, the decolonial love one, but it was cheaper in America. So I figured I would just get it when I got here. Um, then The Lesser Blessed by Richard Van Camp is my last one that I have here. It's been blurbed by Sherman Alexi. First Nation Noir Madness, this book is. I love it. I'm sort of scared of it, too. He writes like a dream or a night terror. So it's a, it's a short story. It is... What? It's, it's like 100 pages. 116? And he is from the Northwest Territories. He's a member of the Dog Group First Nation. He's written some uh, children's books with a Cree author. And just looking forward to this one again just a quick little uh, fiction book and I've never read any Richard Van Camp so excitement I also picked up I Bificus uh, the the biography of Biff Naked I read it and I left it in Canada because I could not <laughs> I was overweight all my shit was overweight so I will be reviewing that in my wrap-up but I don't have it here to show you um, I also picked up is that the only thing I picked up that I didn't bring? Oh, and the one I'm currently reading that is not here is A House in the Sky. So, yes, that was my Canada book haul, and heaven help me, I gotta get reading, because the, the, the TBR pile has now overwhelmed me, and, um, yeah. Although I am reading quite a bit, so I'm still, I'm, I'm okay, but... That was my haul for November. I know it's the middle of November, but I'm not looking to add on to it at all. So uh, anything that comes in after this will be pushed into December. Hope everyone has a great week, a great weekend, and uh, yeah, bye.